हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू ई पी जी पाठशाला आई एम डॉक्टर सविता यादव फ्रॉम ऑल इंडिया इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ मेडिकल साइंसेस टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक ऑन मॉड्यूल आई एन एक्सचेंज क्रोमेटोग्राफी प्रिंसिपल मेथडोलॉजी एंड एप्लीकेशन फ्रॉम पेपर टेक्निक्स इन मोलिकुलर बायोफिजिक्स वन वॉट आर वी गोइंग टू लर्न फ्रॉम दिस मॉड्यूल वी आर गोइंग टू लर्न थियरी ऑफ आई एन एक्सचेंज क्रोमेटोग्राफी देन वॉट आर द टाइप्स ऑफ आई एन एक्सचेंज क्रोमेटोग्राफी एंड कटाइन एक्सचेंज एंड एन आयन एक्सचेंज मीडिया अवेलेबल कमर्शली हाउ विल यू पैक द कॉलम वॉट इज द प्रोसीजर ऑफ आयन एक्सचेंज क्रोमेटोग्राफी फैक्टर्स अफेक्टिंग द आयन एक्सचेंज क्रोमेटोग्राफी एंड वॉट आर द एप्लीकेशन ऑफ आयन एक्सचेंज क्रोमेटोग्राफी नाउ वॉट इज आयन एक्सचेंज क्रोमेटोग्राफी आयन एक्सचेंज क्रोमेटोग्राफी इन्वॉल्व द सेपरेशन ऑफ पॉलर मॉलिक्यूल्स आयंस बेस्ड ऑन देयर चार्ज this step separation techniques can be used to purify any kind of charge molecule ranging from small nucleotide to macromolecule such as proteins the ionic functional group in the stationary phase interact with the analyte of the opposite charge based on the charge of analyte to be exchanged ion exchange chromatography can be subdivided as cation exchange chromatography and anion exchange chromatography The stationary phase of cation exchange chromatography contain negatively charged functional group which retain positively charged ion while stationary phase of anion exchange contain positively charged functional groups and they retain negatively charged analytes ion ex exchange chromatography is a valuable method due to its mild separation condition low cost high capacity high resolving power and wide range of applicability Now, what is the history of ion exchange chromatography? Ion exchange chromatography reports back to 1850. The adsorption of ammonium ion to soils was studied by Thomson at that time. However, the first practical description was given by Spedding and Powell in 1947. They gave a thorough description of preparative separation of rare earths by displacement ion exchange chromatography. the method was further developed in early 1950s when cross and lenser reported several analytical methods for separation of metal ions such as fluoride chloride nitrate or sulfate complexes by ion exchange chromatography ion exchange separation method for proteins was reported by peterson and sober for the first time in 1956 but the present form of ion exchange chromatography was begun by small stevens and bowman in 1975 so what is the principle of ion exchange chromatography ion exchange chromatography utilizes charge charge interaction between the analytes present in the sample the charge of the functional groups immobilized on the stationary phase which is a resin the ion exchange chromatography can be further divided into cation exchange chromatography and anion exchange chromatography in cation exchange chromatography positively charged analytes bind to the negatively charged resin while in case of anion exchange chromatography negatively charged analytes bind to the positively charged resins the bound analytes can be eluted by increasing the ionic strength or by changing the ph of the eluting buffer ion exchange chromatography can be divided into cation exchange and anion exchange chromatography in anion exchange chromatography uh, the resin is positively charged and the analytes which are to be separated are negatively charged while in case of cation exchange chromatography the resin is negatively charged and the molecules which are to be separated are positively charged so bound analytes from this anion and cation exchange chromatography can be eluted by changing the ionic strength or by changing the ph of the eluting buffer ion exchange media is an insoluble matrix with covalently attached charge group cation exchange resins are negatively charged exchangers which bind to positively charged ions cations on the other hand anion exchange resins are positively charged and they bind or exchange negatively charged anions as we know that n terminal amino and c terminal carboxyl group as well as side chain of the amino acid residues of proteins are ionizable thus proteins are charged molecules this property of protein is used in 
ion exchange chromatography to separate different proteins. There are several cation exchange and anion exchange media which are available commercially for purification of charged analytes. Ion exchange resins can either be strong or weak. A strong ion exchange resin is charged over a wide range of pH, while a weak ion exchange resin is ionized over a narrow pH range. The charge functional group may be cross-linked to polystyrene, cephadex, sepharose, cellulose or polyacrylic beads. This table shows the ion exchange media. There are different type of ion exchange media is available commercially. First is strong cation exchanger. Strong cation exchanger contains sulfonic acid as a functional group and this is commercially available as high as macropap while weak cation exchangers have functional group as carboxymethyl cellulose and this is commercially available as CM cephadex. Strong anion exchangers have functional group as quaternary ammonium and they are available again commercially as resource TMQ, macropep, macropep 25Q. And weak anion exchangers has uh, functional group as DAE, diethyl aminoethyl. And they are available commercially as DAE FSL A50, DAE cellulose or macroprep DAE. Figure on your uh, screen shows chemical structure of common ion exchange media. Uh, first is Q anion exchanger, then DAE anion exchanger, S anion exchanger and CM anion cation exchanger. Uh, Q and DA are anion exchanger, S and CM are cation exchanger. Q is a strong anion exchanger and DAE is weak anion exchanger. S is again strong cation exchanger and CM is weak cation exchanger. Now let us see how to pack a column. For packing a column, three steps are required. First is swelling of the gel, another is packing of the column and third one is equilibration of the column. So let us start with swelling of the gel. What you have to do? Add appropriate amount of filtered double distilled water to swell the beads as per manufacturer's rec recommendations. Once the gel has swollen and it is settled in the bottom of the beaker, decant the distilled water from the top. Then add appropriate buffer to the gel. Mix it gently but do not use magnetic stirrer for mixing. If you use magnetic stirrer for mixing, it will break the beads. Now wait for it to settle down, decant and resuspend the gel in equal volume of buffer and degas the gel in order to remove trapped air. All the buffers and gels has to be degassed to avoid air bubble formation since it will cause uneven packing of the column and will give rise to poor resolution. Now how will you pack the column? You have already swelled the gel. Now the, that swelled gel has to be mounted into the column. So what you have to do? You have to mount the glass column vertically on a metal stand and adjust the bottom of the adapter. Add some buffer onto the empty column and allow it to pass through the outlet tube so that if any trapped air bubble is there in the path that can be removed. Now once the air bubble has been removed, you have to block the outlet tubing and once you have blocked the outlet tubing, you have to pour the gel slurry to fill the column up to the required height with the help of glass rod. To avoid introduction of any air bubbles, glass rod should be used in such a way that it touches the inner wall of the column. Now allow the resin to settle down and put the top adapter. Now you have already packed the column, you have after packing the column you have to equilibrate the column. So for equilibration you have to attach the top of the tubing to the peristaltic pump and buffer reservoir and put the bottom tubing to the waste. Adjust the operating pressure according to the manufacturer's recommendation for the gel matrix. Choose the buffer as per your purification needs and equilibrate the column with at least 2 to 3 volumes of this buffer. Let us see the process of ion exchange chromatography. 
process of ion exchange chromatography can be divided into three parts like buffer selection, sample preparation and loading, flow rate and elution. The buffer selection is an important part to achieve good separation in ion exchange chromatography. Buffer should be selected in such a way that its ionic strength and pH are well matched with protein activity and stability. The pH should not disturb the binding of proteins of interest to the resin. pH should not be too low or too high that it may interfere with elution and require high ionic strength for elution. This can cause precipitation of proteins and thus should be avoided. At an ionic strength around 0.1 molar, proteins often start to detach from ion exchange resin, about 0.5 to 1 pH units away from their pi. Thus, pH of the buffer should be at least 0.5 to 1 pH unit below the pi of the protein to be separated. When using a cation exchanger or 0.5 to 1 pH unit above the pi when using an anion exchanger. Commonly used buffer in cation exchange include citrate, HEPAS, MES and phosphate buffers. N-methylene piperazine, bistris, tris, phosphate and piperidin buffers are usually used in anion exchange chromatography. For sample preparation and loading, the sample should be diluted. It should be free of salt as it increases the efficiency of binding. It should be prepared in the same buffer in which the column is equilibrated. If a sample has high salt concentration, it should be diluted with equilibration buffer prior to loading onto the column. This will lower the salt concentration so that it does not hinder functional group binding of analyte. The sample should be clear, free of any debris. Therefore, it should be filtered prior to loading. The concentration of sample loaded should not exceed 20 mg per ml of protein or substance to be analyzed. Sample should be loaded directly to the column via the peristaltic pump. If it is loaded with syringe, the surface of gel should not be disturbed. The amount of sample that can be loaded on column depend on binding ability of the resin. The total amount of protein should not exceed the total binding capacity of the resin packed in the column. Ideally, the flow rate should not be slow when loading the column. Ideally, the flow rate should be slow when loading the column as it will help better binding. Washing of column and elution of bind proteins can be done comparatively at a higher flow rate. Now, once you have bound your sample, you have to now elute your sample. So, once optimum binding has been achieved, the column has to be washed 2 to 3 bed volumes with the equilibration buffer to completely remove unbound contaminants. The bound proteins can be eluted using high salt concentration in the equilibration buffer. Either by gradient, you can use gradient of 0.1 molar to 0.5 molar NaCl or you can use step elution, step wise means first you take 0.1 molar NaCl, elute your protein, then take 0.3 molar NaCl, then you can take 0.5 molar NaCl in step wise and then elute your protein or molecules. The elution with long range gradients result in maximum separation between peaks. However, separation time increases and peaks are broader. In case of elution with steep gradients, separations are faster with sharp peaks. However, resolution may be low as peaks are eluted close to each other. Alternatively, buffer with varying pH can also be used to elute bound proteins.
after completion of each run the column should be washed thoroughly with high salt concentration to remove any analyte left in the gel therefore it should be done at least 2 to 3 bed volumes of the buffer to wash the column properly for preserving for next use figure on screen shows the process of ion exchange chromatography by schematic representation uh, you can see a small column Uh, this column uh, it is with resin and uh, column has got two adapters uh, adapters are uh, should be put in such a way that there is no gap between resin and the adapter because if you put some uh, gap between the adapter and resin it will dilute the sample and tubing are also there on the top and bottom the length of the tubing should be small uh, so it do not dilute your sample or it do not mix your peaks so this is about column now this column is attached to the peristaltic pump because whatever you load or wash you have to control the flow rate so control for controlling the flow rate it is attached to the peristaltic pump so by peristaltic pump you can do washing equilibration and sample loading by controlled flow rate so you have to attach buffer in the beginning so that you can equilibrate the column once it is equilibrated what you can do is you can put your sample which is to be loaded so once sample is loaded you can again remove sample and put again buffer so that whatever contaminants are there in the column can be washed out because in the column only things uh, suppose you are using cation exchanger so only Uh, uh molecules which are binding to cation exchanger should remain rest should be washed out so you have to wash the column properly after binding uh, of your sample once your sample is bound next step is elution so for elution again now you have to remove your buffer from the peristaltic pump you have to put a uh, sodium chloride a salt solution in either in a gradient gradient of say you can say 0.1 molar to 0.5 molar so in gradient uh suppose you start getting a peak at 0.2 molar so what will happen if you start getting a peak at 0.2 molar uh, and gradient will increase uh, on its own so there will be a mixing of peak because a uh, system doesn't know that peak is coming at 0.2 molar so to avoid this mixing of peak what you can do you can use step gradient in step gradient what you have to step wise elution in step wise elution you can take 0.1 molar elute completely with 0.1 molar uh, and then you can take 0.2 molar and suppose at 0.2 molar your peak starts coming then you can keep on adding 0.2 molar nacl to the column till the peak ends so this is how you can improve your Uh, ion exchange uh, efficiency by using step gradient then the column is attached to the fraction collector for collecting the fractions this fraction collector is attached to the detector and if you do not have detector what you can do whatever fractions you have collected can be measured at 280 nanometer uh, to see uh, proteins and those proteins can be detected over there and by spectrophotometrically and you can uh, draw a graph or a peak that where your peaks are coming you can draw a graph of elution profile and see where your peaks are coming and you can uh, that is how you can purify your sample by ion exchange chromatography what are the factors which affect ion exchange chromatography the first factor is media media affects ion exchange chromatography you have to choose cation exchange or anion exchange media in such a way uh, that it separates your substance of interest so properties of analytes to be separated should be studied thoroughly before choosing the media whether you want a strong cation exchanger or a weak cation exchanger or a strong anion exchanger or a weak anion exchanger similarly composition of buffer is also important uh the buffer which you have chosen should be such that your substance of interest is stable in that buffer and it should allow binding of analyte to the resin it should not be like that that is so high that uh, binding of analyte is not happening 
uh, to the resin. So that should be taken care. Sample preparation is also important. Volume, uh, it, should not, uh, it should not be very concentrated. If you are using very concentrated uh, sample preparation, it might get precipitated. And if it is very concentrated, it may not bind properly to the resin. So you have to dilute your sample and sample should not have any salt. If it has got salt, what will happen? Salt will not allow your substance to bind to the resin since it is uh, separating on the basis of charges. So sample should not have salt in the beginning. And even if you want to add salt for say, uh, to reduce some interaction, very low quantity of salt should be used in case of sample. Sample should be loaded uh, in such a way that it should not disturb the gel surface if you are loading the sample manually. Uh, and if you are uh, loading the sample by uh, automatic or, or by auto injector, then there is no problem. But if you are loading it manually onto an ion exchange co uh, column, you should see that sample should be loaded in such a way that gel surface is not disturbed. If gel surface is disturbed, its binding will be in zigzag fashion and if it is in zigzag fashion, the illusion will also be affected. Similarly, flow rate also play an important role. If you use a very high flow rate, say 36 ml per minute or say 24 ml per minute in case of ion exchange chromatography, if you are using very high flow rate for binding, it is possible that your sample may not bind efficiently to the gel. And suppose even if it is bound and if you are eluting it at a very high flow rate, again it may not uh, what get separated, you will get uh, low resolution. So flow rate should be such that the binding and elution is, is efficient, is optimized, is maximum. The length of the tubing which is of the column and uh, through which your uh, sample is passing through after separation should also be small. Suppose if you have taken a long tubing, your column has separated your compound in a very efficient manner. But when it is coming out uh, to go into the fraction collector, the length of tubing is big. What will happen? It will again mix over there. So the whole purpose of separation of uh, your compound by an exchange, by ion exchange chromatography will be defeated because even after separation, the length of tubing is very big and it is getting mixed over there. So length of the tubing which is attaching fraction collector should also be very small. Fraction size also play an important role. Suppose you are collecting fractions and suppose you have a compound uh, suppose I take an example of a protein and a protein, uh, two protein which you are going to separate through ion exchange chromatography are having PI very near to each other. If their PI is very near to each other, definitely they'll elute uh, very near to each other. Suppose if you have taken a fraction size which is uh, more, say 2 ml or 3 ml, so peaks which were separated over there, which were very nearby, uh, are mixing since you, are, you have taken a very big fraction size. So fr fraction size should be minimum so that, uh, so that even the proteins which are having uh, PI nearby also get separated through ion exchange chromatography. So to summarize, the factors which are affecting ion exchange chromatography are media, composition of buffer, sample preparation, sample loading, flow rate, length of the tubing and fraction size. Now let's see where ion exchange chromatography is applied. Ion exchange chromatography is widely used in water treatment plants, food and chemical industries, pharmaceuticals and research. In water treatment, this method is widely applied for water softening, demineralization and dealkalization. Additionally, ion exchange technique is used for selective removal of contaminants from underground water. In food industry, it is used for whey demineralization, acid and color removal from the fruit juices and to concentrate polyphenols. In chemical industry, it is commonly used for recovery and removal of metals, production of chlorine and purification of hydrogen peroxide, etc. And in pharmaceuticals industry, 
iron exchange chromatography is routinely applied for purification of antibiotics and other drugs. It is also used widely in research. It is applied for purification of various molecules including protein, nucleotide and small molecules. Now what are the factors which affect uh, ion exchange chromatography and what precautions we should take while performing an ion exchange chromatography? First is the selection of appropriate media is essential. It should be selected according to PI and other chemical properties of the molecules to be separated. The column length should be less and diameter should be more for better separation result. Flow rate should be appropriate. It should be such that it should not be much slow to allow diffusion of the sample or very fast resulting into mixing of the peak, thus causing poor resolution. Sample should be soluble. If, if it is not soluble, it will clog your co column. So it, sh it should not precipitate. It should be soluble before loading. Sample should be prepared in the same buffer with which column has been equilibrated. Another important factor is you should avoid air bubble in the resin as they might disturb the separation. The tubing length which is there on the top on the, or, or below, the tubing length should be less to avoid mixing of separating analytes. Now so students let us summarize what we have learned from this module. Ion exchange chromatography is used to separate macromolecules on the basis of their charge. It can be subdivided into cation exchange and anion exchange depending on type of analyte they exchange. Wide range of weak and strong anion and cation exchange media are available to choose from as per one's need. Factors that affect separation and resolution may include buffer, media, flow rate, so on and so forth. The ion exchange chromatography is commonly applied in water treatment plant, food, chemical industry, pharmaceuticals and research.